I bring you greetings in the matchless name of my Lord God and soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Hello, this is the Lord's humble, holy, harmless, and quite happy Honey Badger, Reverend Bob Lico, bringing you another news and views for a new month, people. Here we are in September already. My goodness gracious, Tempest Fugit, time is flying. Let's jump right into a few of the headlines that concern me. I just finished writing, I don't know, four or 5,000 word article on the fact that the sodomite society is after our children. It's just that simple. They are after our children. And this is going unabated across our land today. And I've been covering this for, well, almost since COVID's been going on, really, for several months and many of these broadcasts, I've been dealing with the militant homosexual, what I call the sodomite society. There are people that are gay that are not militant. <clears throat> there are gay people that do not endorse or support any type of uh, public cross-dressing or doing anything at all with children of any age. So even though I am painting with a pretty broad brush, I do acknowledge that there are some gay people who do not support the militant gay agenda. However, it is the militant sodomites who are changing the laws and changing the culture and society and foisting their death style upon us. And as I covered in the July issue of Truth Matters, and anyone listening may receive our newsletter sent to their mailing address, first class, an actual physical paper newsletter. I know I'm one of the dinosaurs that still prints out a newsletter and mails it to subscribers. And the subscription rate is zero dolero. If you want to read it, I will be glad to send it to you. But we just covered this in a bunch of articles. Here are new articles, two new articles. Boise corporate sponsored Pride Fest will feature drag kids as young as 11 on 9-11. Isn't that special? Kids as young as 11 dressing up. These will be little boys dressing up as women or vice versa. Women trying to be dress up like uber male figures, stereotypes. And this is being sponsored by the following. Oh, there are a lot more sponsors, and I've listed them, and I continue to appeal to the Christian community to boycott, as much as humanly possible, any and all companies that are supportive of this type of behavior. Sponsors of this Boise family-friendly event include the Courtyard by Marriott, note to self, never staying at courtyard motels or hotels anymore. Hewlett Packard, I haven't bought an HP printer in decades. I will not buy another one. I don't care how good they are. Jack Daniels whiskey, all you whiskey drinkers. If I was still drinking alcohol, which I do not, and I used to drink Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey on occasion, although my family are for the most part, all from Kentucky, and they did not drink Tennessee whiskey. Uh, be that as it may, Jack Daniels is on the side of the sodomites. So all of those big country commercials you see for Jack Daniels and these manly men getting into their pickup trucks and wrestling steers and stuff. Well, maybe they're all broke back mountain type cowboys. I don't know, but certainly Jack Daniels is on the side of the sodomites. 
Citibank is sponsoring this. Well, I've already shown all of the major banksters are solidly in bed with the homosexuals and their monkey pox and everything else that they have. Citibank, divest from them if you can. Hopefully you could find a small credit union that is not bent over uh, for the sodomites. Mike's Hard Lemon Seltzer. I've seen it on the store shelves and never drank it, but I know it's popular. If you drink that, I would stop drinking it. Tito's Handmade Vodka. Again, another liquor. I wouldn't buy that brand and many others. My point is simply this. Believers, let us avoid supporting these businesses. Do you realize that if we as the believers here just in America, people who profess to love Jesus and consider themselves Christians, irrespective of denominational label or church or lack of church upbringing, but you consider yourself a Christian. You love Jesus. You love what he says, and, and, and you're down with the man from Galilee. Wonderful. Then if you are, you should avoid supporting these businesses that are engaged in supporting a godless lifestyle, and not only that, a, a manner of living that is geared towards recruiting very, very, very young children, and I do mean toddlers. Next article. Decatur Pride Fest in Illinois advertises youth drag show. The, the Decatur. So first, we're up here in Boise, Idaho. Boy, you couldn't talk more Bible Belt than Idaho. Now, the Decatur Illinois Pride event is slated to take place September 17th, coming up this weekend, at the Fairview Park Pavilion. An online flyer detailing the event advertises several activities on the main stage, not off to the corner. This is the main event. This is the purpose behind this event. First, they're going to have pets of pride, and after all, pets are often used by mass murderers and pedophiles because children are drawn to animals. So they're going to start with pets of pride, and then after that, a drag queen story hour, and then a youth drag show. Isn't that special? So don't tell me that the Sodomite Society is not after our children. They are. They most assuredly are. And it's time for you and I as believers not only to pray against this prevailing spirit of the age, this spirit of sodomy, but we must also begin to turn out in love and peacefully and picket and demonstrate at these events. Maybe we pay for a table or talk to the city and demand that they allow us equal access to the park and have a table just sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus loves you, that he loves all of these people and wants to deliver them from the mess that they've made of their lives and that the enemy has made of their lives in the way that they, as the very icons of the true and living God, have been brought low and defaced, that can all be reversed in a moment of time by the power of our risen Lord Jesus. So yes, the church needs to be involved. We need to be boycotting businesses that encourage and support financially with our money that we have given them buying their products, these type of events. That's one thing. We boycott those businesses. Number two, we pray for those businesses and these meetings. And number three, we show up at them to say, hey, you know, there is another way. There's another way to live. You don't have to live this way. If you want to be set free and you're tired of this, you can be set free today, right now. And go out there and show the love of Christ. Not going out to condemn them not going out to throw stones or our 50-pound family Bibles at them, to go there and show them a better way. Moving on. 
North Carolina, again, a very <laughs> historically conservative. North Carolina Pride March is condemned. Haters, after small boy was given pole dancing lesson by scantily clad stripper, while other women twerked brazenly on the street. There used to be laws, and there are laws on the books, called that dealt with contributing to the delinquency of minors. And that was encouraged any type of activity from down to smoking cigarettes, drinking a beer under age, being in a bar under age, being in an adult venue under age, and your parents taking you there. The, the, obviously the children do not get ticketed, but the parents used to be ticketed. And sometimes the children would be taken away from these parents because they were deemed unfit parents. And they are. And those children should be removed from them for a period of time until those parents can get their heads on straight. A small boy was given a pole dancing lesson in North Carolina at a pride event. How did that happen? Well, he didn't walk up to the to the pole dancer and go, Hey, do me. Could, could you give me a pole dance lesson, please? Yeah, I really want to become a pole dancer like you when I grow up. It looks really fun. People come up and get, they put money in your panties. Uh, that, that's all right. I mean, hey, hey, cool. Can you believe this? And parents took them there. Parents put their child up on the platform. Parents stood there and allowed this to happen. God have mercy on those parents. I want to slap them. Next article. Antifa armed with AR-15s. Guard kid friendly drag show in Texas. What is going on, people, in Texas? You know why they had to show up with AR-15s? Because the good people of Texas, the godly, God-fearing people of Texas have begun to follow the Honey Badger's advice, even though they probably never heard of me, but it's still the same advice I'm giving it. They're doing it. They're actually showing up at the libraries and protesting and saying, frankly, hell to the no, this stuff has got to go. And and not allowing these events to go on. And so now the Sodomite Society is bringing out guns to guard kid-friendly events so they can continue to groom little children. And that is all that is going on, people. Nothing but grooming, sexual grooming, is going on at all of these gatherings. Any gathering that says family-friendly, that is code. That's the dog whistle for, hey, bring your little children here and let us sexually groom them to turn them into perverts. Because you're not born this way, you have to make a decision at some point in your life. And that's what they're pushing, that envelope to get children younger and younger and younger who really are incapable of making many decisions at all to make this horrid mistake in their lives. Well, my Bible says to give the devil no place. And that's why I'm urging the Christian community to give these demons, and make no mistake about it, all of these events are demonized events. Some people are more or less possessed of unclean spirits at these events. But the overarching spirit, the controlling zeitgeist, if you will, of these meetings is an ancient spirit that goes way back, a Baphomet spirit. Some call it the spirit of Inanna. I just call it a Sodomite society. It is that ancient spirit. It is demonic. And we're not to sit by and idly allow the enemy having any place in our communities. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 30 reads, Take care that you be not ensnared to follow them. After they have been destroyed before you, that you do not inquire about their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? That I also may do the same. Now, the context has to do with Israel coming into the land and destroying the, uh, the heathen and pagan nations uh, and casting them out and destroying them because God, they had filled up the measure of their sins and, and the Lord was done with them. But I like the way that this verse begins, take care 
that you be not ensnared to follow them. This is the exact reason they have these public meetings. They are attempting to ensnare families, young children, here and there. Catch one here, catch one there. It's a win for the enemy. They hold these events to ensnare, to groom people, to teach people how to follow them. Can't you see this? Exodus 23, 24. You must not bow down to their gods or serve them or follow their practices. Instead, you are to demolish them and smash their sacred stones to pieces. Again, we're talking about the conquest of Canaan in context, but I believe by application, we can have a genuine application of this text by the very fact that we are told not to bow down to the gods, the fallen gods and deities of this rebellious planet. You must not bow down to their gods or serve them or follow their practices. That means we don't dress like them. That's why they come out dressed as they are. They are following the directions and leading of their gods. That's why they dress that way. That's why they put it out there and have drag shows. That's why they try to encourage little children to dress the way they do and to have sex change operations that I've already covered in depth. It's going on, on all, in all the major hospitals across this country, sexually mutilating little children with their parents' full consent. And in some places, if you're old enough, if you're still a, a child, you don't even need your parents' knowledge or consent in California. Well, I see libraries, I see cities, I see churches bowing down to these fallen gods. Oh, come right in. Let's have Drag Queen Story Hour. Let's have Drag Queen Sunday School. Let's have Drag Queens in the pulpit. I have covered all of these and shown you the headlines. That is bowing down to this fallen god of this age, following their practices. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 17 begins, But you shall devote them to complete destruction, the, the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Pezzarites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord your God has commanded, that they may not teach you to do according to all their abominable practices that they have done for their gods. And so you sin against the Lord your God. Without getting into the destruction of certain tribal groups, it has to do with their interbreeding with the fallen angels, Genesis 6. I don't have time to go into that. But what I want you to understand and the concern that the Lord had about the people then, and it's still true today, same devils, same demons, that they may not teach you to do according to all their abominable practices. What do you think the whole purpose is? I've just said it for these drag queen events. They are to teach you to do the same thing the drag queen performer is doing. That is how they are worshiping their God. You've got to get this in your thinking. This is not just a, a mental action. This is just not some frivolity. There is a metaphysical principle at work here in their lives. Unclean spirits are causing them to dress and to act and to mince and to prance around the way they are. This is a spiritual thing. And these spirits are doing all they can to teach by example our littlest and youngest amongst us. And why the church is complacent is really beyond me. This is an outrage. And I don't understand why we, God's people, are not more outraged and doing something about it in a biblical fashion. Moving on. Monkeypox. I wish I had my capabilities here. If someone wants to send me a couple hundred dollars, I can buy all of the equipment I need, I guess, to be able to turn up the cricket sound right now. If anyone's followed any of my broadcasts or has watched me on the Honey Badger Bob YouTube channel, with over a hundred presentations, you know that I am one of the first people to be covering monkeypox in America on Facebook. 
and on multimedia platforms. The first little independent guy doing it. Well, I don't watch any of the mainstream news. I do not watch Fox, CNN, MS, NBC, ABC, CBS, CNBC, or did I say NBC, CBS? Yeah, I don't watch any of them. I go to the countries. I try to find local newspapers. I do my own research. And for a while, monkeypox was every other article. Now, very little is being said about it. Well, what are the facts? Well, the bottom little crawl there are the facts concerning America. And I quote, with America now accounting for the highest numbers of monkeypox cases in the world and COVID-19 remaining a significant threat to the region. So America, folks, we're number one. We have the highest numbers of monkeypox cases in the world. Why do you think that is? Do you think it is because we as a nation are controlled by sodomites? Oh, yeah. Oh, entire sodomite spirits over the world. But over America? Oh, oh, we in a big love embrace here in America, squeezing the very life out of this nation. And the judgment of God is falling upon us, righteously so. So America has the highest number of monkeypox cases in the world. It's still going on. Monkeypox has not gone away, folks. It's still spreading, but they're just not talking about it as much. It's not going to go away. I think it's going to continue to mutate and spread. We haven't heard the last of monkeypox by a long shot. And if you'd like, you can just look up the maps and you can see where the current caseloads are. It is decreasing somewhat in Europe right now, which is a good thing, but increasing in America, which is a bad thing. Another thing that I have uh, been covering for several years is the widespread availability of psychedelic drugs and the fact that psychedelic medicine continues to make progress and acceptance and legalization. I am inundated now on Facebook by ads showing the benefits of taking ketamine and other psychedelics Although I'd call ketamine almost a pseudo-psychedelic, but, but nonetheless has some psychedelic principles. Oh, all over Facebook. And I'm uh, very surprised just, just to see that how they allow this to go on because psychedelic drugs have yet to be completely normalized and legalized across America. They are legal in many states, including my state in some cities here in Michigan. But here's the first thing that they've got to do. I've been covering psychedelics on basically three three legs. There are three legs to this school and the reason why they're going to become legal in America and all over the world. Number one is the money aspect. Tremendous, tremendous money to be made. Then they're going to do the health, mental health aspect. It's good for your mental health. In fact, solves many mental health issues so well. We need that, of course, and it should be legalized immediately. And then there's a spiritual, which I'm just playing around with at the edges. I have yet to do a full-blown presentation, I'm about to, on the demonic spiritual aspect of psychedelics. Number one article, patents on psychedelics, the next legal battlefront of drug development from the Harvard Law Review. Because psychedelics have become so widespread and many people are starting to sell them all of the sudden big pharma wants to get involved the only problem is psychedelic plant-based psychedelics you cannot patent anybody can grow one of probably two dozen varieties of psilocybin mushrooms I grew two varieties of myself back in the 70s, and now they have many, many more varieties that you can just buy online. You can't patent that. You can't patent ayahuasca. 
You can't patent what's in salvia, divinorum. You can't patent what's in Hawaiian baby rosewood seeds. You can't patent what's in coleus plants. I mean, you can't patent those. But what they will do is they'll take DMT and they'll rotate the molecule uh, maybe just one spot on, on the, uh, I don't know, I'd have to look at the molecule, the benzene ring or something and, and change it to DMT A1 or something. And they could patent that and it may have the same effect as DMT, it may not. But anyway, the patents are on. If they can patent something, they can control it. Number two, get ready for pharmaceutical grade, remember Big Pharma, magic mushroom pills. Are you ready, folks? Pharmaceutical grade, this means Big Pharma is already involved. I've already covered this in past broadcasts. You have to understand, this is going to become legal. Why? Because all of these huge multinational conglomerates do not invest tens of millions of dollars in products that are never going to see the light of day. Oh, it happens on occasion. But when that happens, heads roll. This is something whose, in quotes, time has come. So get ready for pharmaceutical grade magic mushroom pills. They'll be standardized. You'll know exactly how many micrograms you're getting. I assume they won't taste as nasty as eating the raw mushrooms do, they're the worst tasting things in all of existence, probably for a reason, probably God's way of saying, no, uh -uh, you really don't want to eat this. It tastes horrible. There's a reason why. I, you know, I digress. Next headline, magic mushrooms may help alcoholics drink 83% less or stop drinking entirely. Research suggests this from Market Watch. Again, these are not fly by night Snopes kind of reporting agencies. Market Watch is a very legitimate news reporting agency. Do you see the slippery slope? Do you see why these psychedelic drugs are getting traction? Because they help alcoholics stop drinking entirely. And many, up to 83% less booze after they take magic mushrooms. They could take one of these pharmaceutical grade magic mushroom pills now, apparently, and sit there with a therapist and figure out why they are an alcoholic. Well, I just really like drinking whiskey. Well, I don't know how magic mushrooms are going to make you not want to like drinking whiskey anymore, but apparently they're, they're touting. Now, again, as I always encourage people regarding any headlines, dissect them word by word. Magic mushrooms may, may, circle may help alcoholics drink 83%. They may, they may not. Or stop drinking, research suggests, may and suggests. Two very big words. Next article, magic mushrooms provide fast, long-lasting depression relief study says web md so it helps people get off of alcohol long-lasting depression relief i've covered the articles on people taking magic mushrooms who became less racist or felt the impact of former racism against them less uh, overtly and less psychically than they had they they got better from it so you see a lot of mental health issues being pushed, saying these psychedelic drugs help people gain a better mental pinning and understanding of their life and reality. So we should legalize it. Last one on this topic, psychedelics as a sacrament. Lawsuit says drugs are a religious right. Washington Post. Well, they've been pushing this. I remember this way back in the 60s as a young lad. Uh, the Native American church, which has been allowed to use peyote as a sacrament, of course, began to push for legalizing marijuana in the 60s and other things, and they didn't get very far. 
Thus far, it has not been recognized as a sacramental product or drug in America. Oh, but it will be. It will be. Hide and watch. That one's coming. Before the return of Jesus, the Christ of God, Revelation 18.23 says, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And as has been covered by myself and many others, sorcery is pharmakeia. It has to do with the use of drugs, whether plant-based or synthetically created. Any substance that is taken to evoke or facilitate a spiritual encounter to bridge the gap, if you will, between the natural and the unseen realm is considered sorcery and is an abomination to the true and the living God. It is an attempt to climb up to heaven by another way. And Revelation 18.23 says that all of the nations of the world, in the end, before the return of our Lord, will have been deceived through the means of sorcery. Now, that may mean that the leaders of these nations have been deceived through psychedelic use, or it could be just all of the nations, the people. It's just so widespread. And as you take psychedelic drugs and you get in touch with the uh, entities of the unseen realm that are all hostile to the true and living God, believe me, deception is headed your way. Well, hide and watch. That's why I say psychedelic drugs will be legalized across the board in every nation. And it's already happening. Last but not least, regarding the grocery stores and prepping, I hope you guys have been prepping. I have been writing about this for over three or four years, and I've been talking about it on virtually every broadcast, with the exception of the doctrinal broadcasts. Any of the news and views, any of the broadcasts I've done on the famine or pestilence or the use of wild animals against us, I have always talked about prepping individually and as churches. Here's the first headline take from the Taste of Home. Ten items you might not find in your grocery store and why. And I listen to several broadcasts on YouTube, just, just guys like me. One guy's in Pennsylvania, another guy thinks out in Arkansas. Uh, Southern Prepper One is the one guy. And he does uh, gets reports from people all over the country and different countries now about shortages in their shelves in their areas. I am quite happy to say that currently in the city of Lansing, Michigan, a good demon crap state with our governor right with Build Back Better Biden, somehow our shelves are, for the most part, I would say a good 90% full. We are not suffering. You know, there are a few gaps. Depending on when you go and when the shipment comes in, there'll be a few gaps. But for the most part, anything that my wife and I have wanted or needed let's put it that way, needed, we've been able to get, and in an abundance. But this is not the case in many places around the country. Many, many Walmarts, many smaller towns, many big cities are not getting their shipments, and people are going in, and they're not finding these items. Well, what are the 10 items, Honey Badger? Ah, ah, ah. Go and look it up yourself. I'll give you a hint. Flour, sugar, salt, vinegar, pasta products, bread products, etc. Next headline, the ongoing list of 2022 product and food shortages. There are lots of these lists out there. Look at them. Consider what's on the shelves in your area. 
and prayerfully begin to set things aside for your family and for your neighbors, possibly for your congregation. We're in a global food crisis that will wreck harvests on local economies and trigger civil unrest, the Business Insider. Oh, this is already happening overseas in different countries. There's already civil unrest. Is anyone paying attention? Are they covering the huge farmer strike in the Netherlands where most of Europe's food comes from? Forget the Ukraine. Most of the food comes from the Netherlands, Germany. And these places all due to their you know, uh, deconstruction policies are shutting down farms left and right. And I have no idea, and none of us do, what the logic is behind this when people are starving all over the world. Oh well. Next headline. Water scarcity in the West could create food shortages. Could. It is creating food shortages. We're going to have a heck of a time next year and wait for the end of this year. USDA revises down European Union's 2022 rice output amid widespread drought. I've already covered this, how all of the major river systems in the world are drying up. How the crops along these river systems that feed the rest of the world are dying. Yeah, and do you realize, of course you do, the majority of people in the world eat rice every day. Just do some Google researching. The rice crop output for this coming year is down. At first, you'll see headlines when you look it up. Oh, the rice output looks great. Check the dates and look for things in the end of August, beginning of September. And then you'll see, like I did, the USDA revises down before it was all peachy keen. Now reality is set in. The same is true for Asia. The same is true for America. You know, America grows a lot of rice. Not so much this year. Why? It takes a lot of water to grow rice. We don't have the water. Texas grows a lot of rice, or used to. Not this year. So guys, I hope you've been prepping. I hope you're listening to the Honey Badger. Get out there and buy some extra canned goods. You're really better off getting freeze-dried foods and soups if you can still find them, if the prices have not gone through the roofs, because they're easier to store. A bag of freeze-dried vegetable soup, you know, and in your hand, just, just a, a small bag can make, you know, quarts of vegetable soup. But if you had to put quarts of canned goods on your shelf, that takes a lot of space, a lot of weight, and in the long run can be even more costly. For instance, right now we just went to uh, our Kroger's here, and even though we've got plenty of goods on the shelves, the prices are the same everywhere, and they've gone through the roof. A can of Progresso soup is $3 a can, $2.99. A can of soup, $3. They used to be like 69 cents a can, $3. A can of Campbell's soup, the same thing. Every price is going up. Now we've been buying and, and setting stuff aside for a few years. And so we got stuff when it was a lot cheaper and we rotate it out and we use it. And believe me, those used buy and best buy dates on the top of those cans are a lie. Those cans will last for years and years and years. Do not worry about Jesus will return before your canned goods go bad. As long as they're not dented or bunged out, you know, look like they're about to explode or something, you'll be all right. So I really hope that folks are getting out there and buying rice in bulk, bean, dry beans in bulk, getting your oxygen absorbers, throwing them in there, getting your plastic containers from the dollar store, even though now they're a buck and a quarter. If you shop around, you can find the ones that we get that are made in America, BPA-free, and they'll hold, they have different sizes, they all cost the same, but a, a four-quart plastic jug for a buck and a quarter is the same for one that holds two quarts. We bought a bunch of them and have pounds and pounds and kilos of rice and beans all stored away, and not just for ourselves. 
but because I know the people on either side of us, when the shit hits the fan, they're not going to be ready. And I'm hoping that our new congregation that we've become a part of, that received us upon our corner, that we as a church can, can get together as a people and be prepared and become a storehouse for our community. We're a community church. We should be ready with spiritual food and light and natural food and light as well, as should all of our independent homes, because each of our houses is an embassy, and you and I are ambassadors of another kingdom the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great day in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening.